This third generation version of Audi's devastatingly quick RS3 provides the entry point into the brand's formidable RS performance range and features the most powerful production five cylinder engine in Ingolstadt's history. The big change this time round is the addition of a new torque vectoring rear differential, which, along with a vast engineering upgrade, has transformed the immersive feel of this car at speed. Plus, there's more technology, smarter looks, and a more sophisticated interior. The result is a compact performance car that claims class-leading status more credibly than ever before, and aims once more to rewrite the shopping rocket rulebook. There's something old here, the glorious two and a half litre five cylinder engine that's always characterised RS3 models, here putting out a prodigious 400 PS, but also something very new, four wheel drive compact performance models that sit in this high powered segment are primarily all about the clever ways they can transmit torque to the tarmac. Over the last few years, rivals to this Audi have come up with all kinds of sophisticated solutions here, usually based around the transfer of rear axle torque between the back wheels, a system that Ingolstadt has at last decided to emulate for this third generation RS3. This comes courtesy of a clever new torque vectoring rear differential which works with an electromechanical multi-plate clutch and allows for up to 100% of possible torque to be directed to the wheel at the outside of any given bend, which in turn reduces the cornering radius, eliminates understeer and makes the car noticeably more agile. There's also a selectable drift mode, Audi calls it the RS torque rear setting, which allows opposite lock tyre smoking slides on circuits and closed roads. In short, the story here is that for once we've got an RS3 model that isn't just all about ultimate grip, and an RS3 that really could be called fun. It's all good. Equally impressive is the way you can use all of that power thanks to the lengthy list of engineering enhancements that set this Mark III model apart from its predecessor. The bespoke Bridgestone Potenza tyres sit on wider 19-inch rims increased in negative camber for enhanced cornering traction. The ride height is 10mm lower than an S3, the brakes are now bigger and the dampers are now unique to this car, though annoyingly you still have to pay extra to get them in adaptive form. The seven-speed dual-clutch paddle shift auto gearbox has also been improved with a wider range of ratios, though it's still the car's weakest link, sometimes hesitant to change down quite as quickly as you might like. But there's little else to grouse about. The whole addictive cocktail finished off with a new uprated active exhaust for a more soulful sound. Extra chuffs and whistles alongside the familiar five cylinder rumble. A one-shot RS button on the right-hand steering wheel spoke connects you through to an RS individual drive mode you can tailor to specific preferences and an RS performance setting that simply turns everything up to the Red Mist Max. There's also launch control, which you'll need to replicate the claimed 3.8 second 0 to 62 mile an hour sprint time en route to a top speed that'll flatline at 180 miles an hour if you tick the right option box. Tweaks to the software mapping have released another 20 newton meters of torque. There's now 500 of it, and the power comes in earlier and stays for longer. Of course, though, you'll have to pay for your pleasures. For this sport back body shape, you're looking at a combined cycle reading of 31.4 mpg and a CO2 return of 205 grams per kilometer. For the saloon RS3 variant, it's slightly better, 31.7 miles per gallon and 202 grams per kilometer. Subtlety used to be an RS3 trademark, but as you can see, that's well and truly been abandoned this time round, especially if, as here, you opt for one of the more extreme colours. But if you really are done with worrying who notices you and what they think of your purchasing decisions, we'd recommend you consider the more conservative looking saloon body style, which, as with the previous generation model, is provided as an alternative to this sportback hatch. 
Either way, in profile, the Cognoscenti will identify this Audi as an RS3 by its lower ride height, 10 millimetres closer to the ground than the S3 and a full 25 millimetres lower than an ordinary A3. And, of course, by the various RS body styling touches. The front end is where this ultimate A3 really stands out from its stablemates, though. This redesigned glossy black version of the single-frame front grille with its honeycomb mesh is apparently needed to cool the larger five-cylinder engine that lies beyond. And it's flanked by these huge lower corner cutouts, which aim to make the car look more aggressive and emphasise its wider front track. It's an angrier look that'll certainly be ideal for clearing the motorway fast lane as you bear down upon commuting dawdlers. At the back, Audi experts will quickly spot the vertically running struts of the distinctive rear diffuser, which at either corner swaps the twin exhausts of the S3 for huge oval elliptic single tailpipes. So, an evolved exterior, but what's it like inside? There aren't actually that many model-specific features, just carbon dashboard inlays, a flat-bottomed RS-branded three-spoke wheel with an RS button, and these branded sport seats upholstered in quilted Nappa leather. The steering wheel paddle shifters are still rather small, but gain tactile zinc finishing, and just as on an S3, the start button gets a red ring, plus there's a diminutive little silver gear selector. Having taken in all of this, owners of the previous generation version will be more likely to notice what Audi calls a new level of digital technology, though it's been incorporated here much less self-consciously than it is in a comparable Golf R. As is Audi's current style, black panel tech dominates with hidden screens you don't notice until you fire the engine, at which point the 10.1-inch MMI centre screen and this 12.3-inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle display both spring into life, both featuring RS3-specific touches. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, given that the 1.43-metre height and 2.64-metre wheelbase dimensions of this third-generation RS3 are unchanged over the previous generation design, we weren't expecting too much change here. And sure enough, as with most cars in this segment, it's not particularly spacious in the back. Still, a pair of modestly proportioned adults would enjoy reasonable comfort, helped by a small 3mm increase in elbow room this time round. And what's on offer here is directly comparable to what you get in the two rival models we've been mentioning, the Golf R and the Mercedes AMG A45. Boot space falls over an ordinary Quattro A3 or S3, the usual 325 litre capacity falling to just 282 in this RS3 Sportback model. It's 321 litres with the RS3 Saloon. Push the rear bench fully flat and you'll have up to 1,104 litres of room to play with. And in summary, well, finally, we can recommend the RS3 without any caveats. Well, almost anyway. We wish it was more affordable. The adaptive damping system should be standard. The S-Tronic gearbox is occasionally a bit of a weak link. It'll certainly be pricey to run and the angrier looks won't endear it to introverted folk. But it's now a super hatch, not only for the Autobahn and the morning commute, but one with everything required to make your heart beat just a little faster. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs>